Tash Delek, welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news edition on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's have a look at today's headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama emphasizes on cultivation of warm-heartedness. His Holiness the Dalai Lama addresses participants of sea learning and cognitive-based compassion training. His Holiness the Dalai Lama congratulates President of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. United Nations Treaty Body calls China to abolish all forms of discrimination against Tibetan women. Uyghur and Hong Kong activists visit Tibet House Brazil. French Senate invites France and Belgium Tibetan representatives. Swiss Parliamentary Group for Tibet condemns Thamo Fischer. Tibetan political prisoner Thunduk Pongchen visits Tokyo. Tibetan Association in Germany holds annual journal board meeting. Representative Kama Singe inaugurates Tibetan Weekend School. Tibetan Buddhist institutions in Belgium offer long life prayers to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Central Tibetan Administration leadership attends 28th Game Chimo Memorial Gold Cup. On Tuesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave a two-day teachings in the mornings for Tibetan youth at the main Tibetan temple. His Holiness gave an introductory teaching on the three objects of refuge and also conducted the ceremony of generating bodhicitta. On the second day of the teaching, His Holiness conferred the Manjushri blessing. <laughs> His Holiness the Dalai Lama granted a special audience to the facilitators and participants of the workshop on sea learning and cognitive-based compassion training on Friday last week at his residence in Dharamshala. On Monday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote to Recep Tayyip Erdogan to congratulate him on his victory in the Turkish presidential election. His Holiness in his letter expressed hope that Turkey will continue to prosper and make a significant contribution to the peace and stability of our increasingly interconnected world. On Tuesday this week, upon the conclusion of the 85th session of the United Nations Treaty Body, International Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, the United Nations Experts Committee published its concluding observation report. They called upon China to immediately hold non voluntary labor transfer and vocational training programs in Tibet and carry out meaningful consultation with the affected Tibetan women. The committee also urged China to respect, preserve and promote the cultural identity of Tibetan women and eliminate intersecting forms of discrimination against women belonging to ethnic, religious and linguistic minorities, including Tibetan women. The Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women session was held from 8 to 26 May. The nine periodic report of China was reviewed by the committee on 12th May. Welcoming the concluding observation report of the convention, Representative Tile Chuki thanked the committee for upholding its mandate. The Tibet group comprising the Tibet Bureau Geneva, Tibetan Women's Association Central and Tibet Advocacy Coalition took part in the entire review process. All three groups made individual written submissions and also briefed the expert on the situation of Tibetan women in Tibet. 
Rafael Weiner David, the program manager of the China and Latin America at International Service for Human Rights, led a delegation of Uyghur and Hong Kong activists to Tibet House Brazil in Sao Paulo, Brazil on Monday this week. During their visit to Tibet House Brazil, the delegation held a discussion with Gandhian professor Leah Diskin, a social worker and longtime friend of Tibet, and Tonya Van Acker, the academic director of Palas Athena, to build solidarity and support for their causes. The group also met with the Secretary of Human Rights of Sao Paulo Prefeitura, Sonia Francin, expressing willingness from the governmental level to engage with violations of human rights issue encountered by Tibet, Uyghur and Hong Kong activists. Senator Jacqueline Ostage Brignot, chair of French Senate Tibet Support Group, invited Tibetan representatives in France and Brussels, consisting of Europe Tibetan parliamentarian Thubten Gyatso, representative Rinzin Chuden Genkang, coordinator Thubten Tsiring of Paris Office of Tibet, and staff Jingmi Doji to attend the session at the Senate. Senator Bruno delivered a report on the recent visit of French Senate delegation to Taramshala in April at the Senate on 24 May. Representative Genga extended gratitude to the French Senate delegation for visiting Dharamshala and appealed for the support of French Senate Tibet Support Group in the re-establishment of Tibet Support Group in French National Assembly. Swiss Parliamentary Group for Tibet expressed concerns and called upon Thermo Fisher Scientific Incorporated to dispel doubt over information concerning its unethical business practices with China particularly material provided for the mass DNA collection of Tibetans in Tibet. In an open letter addressed to the chairman of the Thermo Fisher Scientific, the parliamentary group voiced its concerns that the company may be supporting the repressive policies and practices by China in Tibet on a large scale. The letter also called the company to describe the measures taken to ensure businesses with due diligence are taken into account while supplying materials to China for mass DNA collection in Tibet. Representative Tilichuki welcomed the stand of the Swiss Parliamentary Group for Tibet and thanked them for their continued efforts to resolve the China-Tibet conflict. On Monday this week, Tibet House Japan welcomed Tundu Bongchen and his family to the office where Representative Arya and the staff received the family and updated them on the situation in Japan and activities of the office. Tundu Bongchen, a former Tibetan political prisoner and a filmmaker, visited Tokyo along with his family where they met several people including the press and spoke on the background of his film Jigdel and the task of recording the situation in Tibet. The filmmaker and his family spoke of their struggle and life experiences. Representative Dr. Tsawang Gebo Arya of the Liaison Office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama introduced Tundu Bongchen and the struggles surpassed by his family against the hardship of freedom and justice in Tibet. The Tibetan Association in Germany held its annual general board on Sunday last week at City of Klon. Presiding over the meeting, Representative Chile Chuki of the Tibet Bureau Geneva commended the association members for their contributions and for their coordination with the Tibet Bureau Geneva in implementing projects and programs for the protection of Tibetan national identity. Representative Kama Singhe of the Tibet Information Office in Australia inaugurated Sharon Kitsi Ling, a new Tibetan language and culture weekend school at Central Coast in New South Wales State on Tuesday this week. The school's name was graciously bestowed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama at the request of the Central Coast Tibetan community. Representative Kama Senge urged the community members in general and parents in particular for their support, motivation and encouragement to their children in safeguarding the distinct cultural identity of Tibetans. On the occasion of the holy month of Buddha Purnima, six Tibetan Buddhist institutions based in Belgium comprising Dzogchen Gelek Palbar Ling, Shetuk Tenge Ling, Sejin Association, Kama Sonam Gyatso Ling, Chokling Jenjin Khan and Sera J Buddhist Cultural Center offered long life prayers to His Holiness the Dalai Lama at the monastery in Scotland on Tuesday this week. Around 200 people participated led by Tibetan Buddhist associations and local Tibetan community. On Thursday this week, the 28th Game Chemo Memorial Gold Cup commenced in Dharamshala.
The inaugural ceremony of one of the largest sports events of the exiled Tibetan community saw attendance of Central Tibetan Administration leadership led by Sigyon Pemba Tsering and Speaker Kembo Sonam Tempel. The soccer tournament is taking place at Upper TCV football ground from 1st to 11th June. This time, 16 teams representing Tibetan exile communities from India, Nepal, Europe and Australia are taking part in this tournament. That is all the news for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. Thank you for watching Tibet TV.